Hello, everybody. This is Dave Burkus for the Burkus Report and Burkonomics. I'm glad to be back, and today we're going to talk about business and the use of resources. So I have some ideas for you that might be able to help. One of those is the concept of fixed overhead. You know, if you get a product into the marketplace faster, just because that product has gotten there faster, you've saved money because the cost of rent and all the payroll that you've paid and all the other forms of overhead end up eating up those amounts of money that wouldn't have been lost otherwise. So efficiency in getting your product or service to the marketplace is a most important thing. You can even do the math. If you're burning $20,000 a month in fixed overhead and it takes another two months to get the product into the marketplace, you've lost $40,000 you will never recover. So there are two things. There is the fixed overhead loss and there is the opportunity loss because that product isn't in the marketplace selling during those two months as well. Think about efficiency of speed in getting things done. Number two, avoid time bankruptcy. I know you've never heard the term before. It's an unusual term at that, but I want to tell you what it means because time bankruptcy, as opposed to physical bankruptcy, is just as dangerous. Time bankruptcy means you've taken the core asset of your company, not necessarily your time as an individual. It might be the time of your chief programmer, the person who's the chief trainer, somebody who knows well something about your product, and you've wasted it. In fact, what you've done, perhaps, and I'll give you an example, is you've used that in a way in which you cannot recover. Let's say that you're a software company and you release the software and want to have three or four customers test that software at first. And the software has many bugs, and so you release it into the marketplace. And the first thing you discover is the chief programmer has to get to that customer to solve the problems one after another and gets off of developing new software. It doesn't take long before two customers take more of that chief programmer's time, three even more, and after a while, the chief programmer is no longer a programmer. He's a support person. You'll find that true of any business that you have where you take core resources and devote them to fixing problems rather than creating as they should be. Time bankruptcy, something to worry about. You know, when I've used that term before, there are people who said, you know, I've experienced something like that in my business before. I've just never known the name for it. Well, now you do. The third thing I think we want to talk about today is cash is not the only measure of employee satisfaction. There are four or five measures that are really as important as cash. I've done this survey numerous times in numerous companies, as have others, and what we find is people love to work for companies where the culture fits, where there's fun to work. We love to work in companies where there is respect for what you've done. We love to work in companies where you tell us what to do and maybe why to do it, but not how to do it. We like to be responsible ourselves as employees for getting the job done without having somebody over our shoulder every single moment of time. So with all of those things, equal to sometimes the amount of pay, it is surprising to me that there are people who will work for companies sometimes for less money because they're more fun and they have more respect given and they feel like they're contributing more to the company, its products, and its services. Think about that when you next hire the next person you do. It means that you have done something well for them, and they have done something that they feel good about. This is Dave Burkus for the Burkus Report, and we'll see you again soon.